Get your indie fix at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Get 20% off any digital downloads with the coupon code HEAD, including our latest release, IWC A New Era, featuring Al Snow and Luke Doc Gallows of TNA and WWE. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 10. We are in the double digits. You know what that means, and around here, that means I probably won't quit this podcast anytime soon. That's the threshold, Eamon. We've made it! We've Yay. made it to 10! We've, we've we've crossed the line, as they say. Yo, yeah. no, 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 no. That's another podcast entirely. I'm, of course, uh, Mike Sorg, Sorgatron here in the Pittsburgh area, of course, uh, uh, doing production here with Sorgatron Media uh, for some local guys like International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some other stuff around town over in Ohio, uh, Western PA, all over the place, uh, and uh, some other stuff like the Montreal Theory I was involved with. And, uh, and indie wrestling is obviously our passion. Another guy who's very passionate about it is Eamon who is the announcer for Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in Texas. Yes indeedy. Yes indeedy dandy. So we are spanning the oh. globe. We're spanning the yes I said yes indeedy dandy. Oh so my I, god. I your oh, oh you kill me. I, I'm trying to overcompensate oh. for my young age. Oh. Um, but no I, we're spanning the globes. We're spanning the different uh, I guess avenues in a sense so yeah exactly and we're doing it by make sure we talk to somebody in either of our our areas our, our our travels here in uh in in either of our parts of the country um and you guys can join us first of all thanks a lot to basic sickness for that uh intro song check him out and all his free downloads are at basicsickness.com and you can join this show live round about 11 p.m eastern time 10 central you gotta think about you there amen uh Thanks. over at uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com there's a link uh, for the live stream, the live chat room, you can join us, and you can find all the stuff we're doing at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can email us at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subject line indie to be about this show of the many that we're doing over here, or drop us a line on the phone number four one two two zero six WMS zero if you want to leave a voicemail. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, on Google Plus, and of course you can find the show on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and starting this week. We are live on the uh, iHeartRadio app hey, and website. So uh, hi, surprise, uh, we're up there with our good friends. I know locally, Mikey and Big Bob on the radio, we're on the same application that they are. It's amazing. Uh, so hopefully we're, that brings... We're, we're, we're getting big time. Sorry. Big time. Big time. Hey, we made it before the main show got approved. That's so true. we'll see. I, I don't know if that's they'll approve the main go show. Boost on my end. I'll say I feel that like much. the main show is going to be way too harsh for them to get on our... So let's get right in it. We got a very special guest this week. Eamon, tell me about him. Yes, we got a very special guest this week. Uh, joining us uh, is definitely a guy I wanted to have on the show for a good while. He's a uh, he's a growing talent in the Texas independent wrestling area, one I definitely feel you should keep your eye on. Uh, he is none other than that guy, Scotty Santiago. Scotty, how are you? I'm doing very well. How's everybody there? In, Everything. Not in Pittsburgh. You're in San Antonio. I'm in San Antonio, right? Uh, well, currently I'm in Corpus Christi on vacation, but normally you will see me from San Antonio. But, oh, but yeah. Okay. But that, but yeah. Um, so, Scotty, I definitely wanted to have you on uh, because um, we're we're starting to get more. I know we've had a lot of like outside of the actual like in ring wrestling talents on this show, but it's cool to actually sit down with some uh, indie wrestlers and some younger wrestlers. Um, and I wanted to, I guess the first question I can ask and, and one we like to ask all our guests is what, what's your first memory, I guess, of uh, professional wrestling What's the first thing you remember seeing. Uh, the first thing about wrestling prof professional wrestling was, I think I was maybe like four years old and I think it was Christmas. I got a, like one of those really gigantic uh, Roddy Piper. It wasn't an action figure because none of the arms moved or anything like that. But it was just, I guess, like a figure or something that you just hit into other action figures. So that's probably the first thing I can consciously remember of wrestling. I remember my pets hated wrestling and they didn't want me to have anything to do with it. But then why would you give me a Roddy Piper action figure you know so. <laughs> just setting you up for that i mean come on i guess well they always thought it was like trashy or whatever 
So, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They're begrudgingly accepting I'm doing it now, though. So. Yeah. So, and, and cause I mean, you eventually did get into pro wrestling, uh, uh not too long ago. I, I believe you're what a couple years in now, uh, in pro wrestling. Um, since let's see here, it's been a little over, not quite two years. Hang on a minute. Uh, I got to do some math really quick. I'm, I'm really terrible with any kind of anniversary or anything. My first <laughs> match I would say was in like 2012. So almost, almost two years. It'll be two years and probably like July or August, somewhere around there. Nice. I remember it was warm when I had my first match. So. Cool. And and from what I know and what I've known of you, uh, and you you're definitely if you follow, if you follow Scotty on Twitter, you'll see this. You you train predominantly, and I believe started training under uh, former WWE's uh, Funaki Show Funaki. Absolutely. Um, I've actually kind of taken this week off just because I'm broke and uh, I'm also preparing for a couple shows weekend. I'm going to be working here in San Antonio on Friday, wrestling here for TWA. Hey, there he is. Do you have the pose <laughs> with doing the, the finger? <laughs> the not, not, like, not the middle finger, but like he's pointing his finger up. That one, the third one. That's yes. Okay. So, uh, fun kind of story i guess uh i had a promotional photo taken of me once and they were asking like what you know or they were like yeah just you know promo photo strike a pose or something and i've always seen that picture of funaki and i couldn't think of anything else so i used that pose and that's like my go-to my go-to pose for any <laughs> there we go that's probably no that's is that no I didn't have gear when I took that promo photo, but that is the other one. Basically, it's a little bit. Yeah. But other than that, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, learning from Funaki in more, from Funaki in more ways than one, I guess. Um, yeah. But, yeah, well, I, talk, talk about it in your sense, like, how was, like, actually training under Funaki? How was the, uh, I guess, regiment-like sort of, I, I definitely, with indie wrestling, we definitely always want to touch on, like, the actual training aspect. Like, how was it, like, actually getting in the ring and training? Um... It's really awesome, actually. I mean, like, it's as great as you would think it is. Funaki is super cool. Probably, like, one of the most patient human beings I've ever met. Um, it was brutal, though, when we first got started. It was me and uh, another local guy here in the Texas area, Dylan Dunbar. And he had just gotten started. I had had a little bit of training, but we had been training previously at another gym for three months and that had gotten shut down the original funaki dojo or no wait that was the food dojo and it became the funaki dojo later uh but yeah we started under that me and uh, dylan dunbar terrible grammar there sorry about that <laughs> but, uh, i'm sorry i'm i'm really conscious about that but i still don't fix it so but um oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we started training and it was early summer, and it was just brutal. The heat down here was ridiculous. Mm. Uh, there we go. Oh, man, they've got really nice, like, graphics and everything. That's really cool. <laughs> is, this the, is this the match with Alex Reigns? I believe so, yeah. That's okay. from the uh, Inspire Pro show. That's, that's my friend Olivia almost pulling me over into the second <laughs> row. Uh, I actually knew her before I got into wrestling, but she wrestles up in the DFW area. So, but um, yeah, training. So it was just ridiculously hot. There were days where it would be 105. And the dojo is located in like basically an MMA gym. Sorry, I'm shifting around a little bit, <laughs> but uh, it's located in this really like it's basically a garage essentially. And no air conditioning, very little ventilation, and it was just absolutely brutal as far as, like, the heat was. And then, you know, you're constantly just running drills for two hours and just working on positioning, drilling, drilling, drilling stuff. So, uh, but, you know, over time it got easier. And then when it, once it got colder, it was a little bit better. And then once uh, Dunbar actually learned how to, you know, do certain things, we were able to really progress a little bit faster. So, 
But when he first came in, he had no experience, so we were having to play catch up with him. So, hmm. and then what would you say like, from your training with Funaki? What do you think was the, I guess, your biggest takeaway from it? The biggest thing you would you learn from your, uh, like, I guess, from your origin uh, training there. Um, in ring wise, he is really big on positioning, just ring awareness, knowing where you are in the ring, and that's helped me so much. The funny thing is, is a lot of people think that I'm a lot better than I actually am. Uh, it's a very closely guarded secret. Don't tell anybody, but I actually suck really bad. So, <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, he was able to train me as far as with awareness and stuff like that of, you know, okay, I can react to this situation. I can react to that situation. Mm. So, uh, you know. I and uh, I would say yeah, I would be one of those people that would say, especially now that your performance in the ring definitely shows that stuff. I think when I, when I've seen you wrestle as as of late, like you, you can see a lot of the little things, like sort of. And I, and I would think it would be from that uh, from that teaching that you uh, received. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, you know, he um, he's taught me so much stuff that you know, I mean, it doesn't even necessarily just stop at a wrestling ring. I mean, you know. You know, I basically like I hang out with him more than I hang out with my own family now at this point. Not hang out, but I mean, like I see him more often just because like I train with him constantly. So, mm. uh, but yeah, I mean, oh, that sucked. <laughs> but um, that was probably that Instagram photo the other day of me getting my head taken off. It's a good photo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, just you know taught me about wrestling taught me about life you know he's a super cool guy apparently okay i don't even know if like he's supposed to keep this on the down low i don't know why he would or why he would be like not wanting me to mention this but there was a rumor going around that he used to own like a crepe business or something some kind of like bakery mm. or something um and I've always like wanted to check it out, but he never talks about it. So <laughs> if anybody has any information on his bakery located somewhere in San Antonio, maybe let me know. And I can just ambush him there one day and maybe buy some pastries from him or something. But, <laughs> I'll have to do some scouting. Definitely yeah. have to keep the eye out. Um, and, and I know you definitely, I mean, training under Funaki, you've also, even if you're, when you're still sort of more regularly wrestling, you're training still beyond that. Um, who, was, who, who would you say are some of the people that uh, you think has taught you the most uh, since, uh, since getting into pro wrestling? Um, probably second up would be Ken Johnson, just because I've wrestled him like 50 times. Not, it, not that much. But, you know, I've certainly been around him long enough. He was the first guy I ever had a match with. And just constantly see him around all the time. And I've actually trained with him specifically a couple of times. Uh, I was training with him just the other week. And he taught me how to do a spinning head scissor, which I still have not done in the match yet. But eventually, at some point, I'll bust that out. So, so you have to, everyone uh, out there in Texas you have to keep your eye out. Um, but yeah. And one of the other questions I think we predominantly ask our guests is, and we're starting to ask people more regularly, is what do you think, and, and this, you don't have to be specific in a sense, but what, what do you think is some of the best things about in, uh, working on the independence, and in turn, some of the worst things you think? Um, hmm. Best things, I mean, you know, I certainly enjoy the places that I work at and the things that I do and the opportunities that I've been given. Um, you know, that's, I guess that's one of the things that I really like about it is, you know, it is sort of merit based to a degree. Um, so, you know, if you work really hard and, you know, you do the things that you're supposed to be doing, then people will give you opportunities, which is exactly what I've gotten. And that's mm -hmm. all I could really ask for. And thankfully, I've been able to make the most of them. But, uh, least favorite thing is that's only, I guess, to a degree. And there is a little bit of, uh, favoritism i guess you could say but i mean i haven't really been terribly affected by that so uh it hasn't mm. really been a huge issue for me but i have seen instances of it with other people and been like ah oh, that's us hey i'm giving Byron Morgan or Byron woke out a reverse chin lock right there. <laughs> that was just this last weekend i actually um 
I think I strained my bicep in that match. I don't know how, but oh, geez. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I got to the back, and I was like, "Hey, I can't extend my bicep all the way." <laughs> That's never good. Anyway, would you say yeah, also sort of the, the uh, one of the hard things about uh, independent wrestling or pro wrestling, I guess, in a sense, is those those injuries you just sort of like that come up out of nowhere. Uh, I, mean, I think you're cutting out in. Yeah, you're back. God, yeah, this a little. Sucks. You're back. You're back. Oop. You're good. You're back. Okay. So, uh, I can kind of hear stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, I'll turn my mic back up. There you are. You're good. Did you hear the question? Uh, I heard injuries and... Uh, or w so, would you think in a sense that, uh, that... that Do you think those injuries would also like to be in a sense of one of the harder things about pro wrestling is those injuries that sort of like come out out of nowhere? Yeah, absolutely. That comes with the territory. And I mean, um, you know, I've been really lucky and fortunate to have not been injured really severely or anything like that. Just, you know, I'm super bruises and aches here and there, but, uh, you know, I've seen certainly some pretty bad injuries for sure. Uh, my hairline is so weird in that picture, though. Why did I make that my profile picture? <laughs> I'm, I'm just really self-conscious. I don't know. Not really. Not really, <laughs> or I wouldn't be doing this. But, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Um, I guess another – I, to talk about some of your breakout stuff I think you've gotten, especially this past year, uh, I think one of the things that I definitely wanted to touch on with you about was I think the moment that I think a lot of Texas people got to know you was uh, your work in ACW uh, when you uh, were sort of drifting away from your old uh, partner, Dylan Dunbar, and joining up with uh, Steve and, and, and his, wonderful, uh, his wonderful array of gimmicks. Um, and, and I noticed from, I think, your time with him, I think it was sort of a sense of, people starting to see your personality come up in a sense. Um, would, would you attest to that, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, that was around the time where I was starting to get a little bit more comfortable in the ring, a little bit more comfortable with sort of, you know, who I was in the ring. So, you know, that was certainly an aspect of it. But uh, funny side story, it wasn't so much that I drifted away from Dylan Dunbar, it was that uh, Funaki hadn't given him the okay to wrestle yet, so he didn't have the Funaki seal of approval. We were tag partners, but uh, mm. we were wanting to be tag partners, but you know, Funaki was just not having any of it, so uh, I guess he just kind of got frustrated and went off the deep end. But yeah, teaming with Steve is probably one of the most fun things I'm doing in wrestling. Uh, you weren't I you weren't at the last ACW show, but he had had he had spent a weekend at Jameson's, Jack Jameson, local <laughs> wrestler here. So he was actually unconscious for a good chunk of that match. So I kinda had to use him as a weapon, essentially. But very nice. I did my one of my personal favorites was from the uh, the December show, and Sorg, you'll enjoy this. That uh, uh, you guys form a Juggalo tag team, uh, including you Juggalo. being donned he, as uh, Scotty Two Dope. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he threw that out there. I don't know. Um, I don't have a problem with Juggalos, but he was the one in the face paint. I was not wearing face paint. So. Is it? Is it? You this did have a very. You did have a very nice Christmas sweater, though. I do have to point that out. Is, I did. My girlfriend made that for me. So. Is it, it's and not. We're not talking about um, this one with you with the sting, is it? No, no well, that that, that's that's totally that different. One. One. Okay. Was, uh, he had still a lot of the face paint and stuff, so he just decided to go as the crow. Obviously, that's the crow, and you know, classic crow, but hitting me in the face with a bat. <laughs> awesome. Obviously. Uh, it, yeah. And and then uh, another thing that you're really starting to break out and doing is uh, for uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, you had a, a de you debuted back in October against Carson, where I think people sort of caught on to you uh, is, and uh, starting what I like to call the uh, the that guy movement. 
Um, uh, cool, I cool. think that might be too close to some other movement that's going on right now. So uh, <laughs> for copyright reasons, we should probably call that something else. But, yeah, we'll have to uh, yeah, that. yeah. Um, that was a way bigger reaction than I was expecting for sure. Like uh, I, they basically chased me out of the building, but I could hear still the fans inside the building. Um, so that was definitely you know pretty crazy adrenaline going and everything and then I'm just like still hearing people chant for me with like several walls and stuff between us so that's definitely really cool and for those and for those fans that haven't seen it uh you uh Brandon Shout, another guest from the podcast didn't get to get your ring introduction out uh for your match since Carson did a, 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 a pre-match I've been, attack I've been three matches there and still not been introduced so <laughs> So the crowd decided, uh, since they had not known your name, uh, to chant uh, that guy. And it, I guess it sort of catched on. And, and, and do you notice stuff like that, uh, where you sort of see uh, that kind of reaction, you kind of just go with it in a sense? You have to go with that. I mean, I don't really know what that guy even entails. I mean, I am that guy apparently, but you know, I don't know what people think that means. So I just go with it. Like, I'm just, okay, I'm that guy. So... <laughs> awesome and and you've gotten to wrestle i think a, a, a good amount of uh you're wrestling a, a lot of different more people a lot more high profile matches now all throughout texas uh now that mm-hmm. you've got uh, a, a bit more exposure now uh out of the people i would say in texas who do you think is one that you want to to face somewhere down the line that i would like to face somewhere down the line or that you would uh, like to face yeah that's a really interesting question uh, um I don't know if he's really a Texas guy anymore, but uh, ACH obviously would be at the very top of that list. I mean, he's sort of the, mm-hmm. the crop, if you will, for, for you know this area as far as you know cruiserweight style, cruiserweight type guys, which I would sort of uh, fit myself into that category, I suppose. So, uh, he would certainly be up there for sure. But also Sean Vex, uh, Davey Vega, who's also not really a Texas guy, but some someone that I would certainly like to have a match with. Yeah. Um, probably a lot more. I feel like I'm leaving a bunch of people out, but uh, you know, off the top of my head, those three would certainly be uh, interesting matches. I think so. Awesome, man. I'll throw them around too. Third round. Yeah, I, I would love like to I see that. That's that. one I was thinking. I would love to see personally. Um, I think that could be really fun. Um, but yeah, and hopefully I would definitely think you would hopefully get something like that down the line because I, th- I think, and I know you discounted yourself before, but I think you really are impressing a lot of people and, uh, and showing what you can do. And I think that's great to see that kind of a breakout talent. Um, but yeah, uh, so, uh, uh, if people want to, uh, get to know you, get to follow you, uh, in any form of social media, uh, where, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook. But if you're wanting to have interactions with me, it'd probably be better to follow me on Twitter. Twitter handle at the Green Boys with a D, not a th. There it is. <laughs> um, you know, just tweet at me. I'll usually retweet you as long as it's not something really ridiculous or you know whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, hold on a second. Um, can you click on the first photo on? That I have on my Twitter really quick. Just okay. for I I want to show right the, here. the uh the people watch. There we go, that one. Okay. <laughs> I so, love that photo. This is my favorite photo ever. Uh the both of these gentlemen are Funaki's other students. Uh so they started a little bit after I did, started training under them. But uh that's Brooks and Debar or uh Dylan Dunbar and Debar's, excuse me. Um, getting his I believe it's collectively being known as Dress to Kill now in Inspire Pro. Um, I, are they known as that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know they're known as that in ACW, but I don't know if they're known as that in Inspire. But mm. Possibly. They, they, they've uh, usually been uh, co- on the coattails of one, uh, Mr. Sistine. Uh, only, I believe they've only wrestled for Inspire so far in a, in a uh, over-the-top battle royal, so... Um, and yeah, that's a, that's a interesting picture of a of an interesting duo of, of men. Wait, 
Wait until you see the uh, promo pictures from ACW uh, this last month. It got worse. It got a lot worse. So. <laughs> <laughs> like they as 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 weird as that one was, like they topped it. Like way they went way beyond where you think they would go. But anyways, uh, yeah, definitely. Let's try to see have another friend of the Indie Mayhem show, Kelly Kyle. So. Oh, has he been a guest so yes. far? Yes. He, he, on our episode two, actually. Yeah, he's early. Okay. All the all the Texas guys get the even numbers. Uh, so far, yeah, that's actually been the, the that, that's actually been it. <laughs> well, we, yeah, I think that's because a... we we trade off because I I get somebody from my area <laughs> you, one you week, pitch, he gets you another pitch one. Guys get the odd numbers. Oh man, I, I can never have remedy yeah. on. He'll hate it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I got the solid ten, so I'm happy with that. So. Yeah, it's a big number. Big number for us. Um, it is. But no, it's, it's definitely great talking to you. I, if you want to join us for the rest of the conversation and, and chime in on anything you'd like, we we definitely love for you, too. Um, and, yeah, there's a – I guess we can discuss some indie stuff. I, I, I don't know if we had anything planned, Sorg. Uh, no, or... Definitely nothing really planned. Uh, kind of a quiet week. A lot of preparations for indie stuff uh, on my end of things um, mm-hmm. and really just kind of recovering from the blast of shows we had at the beginning of the month here. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and it's, it, I, I guess we could talk about that in the sense that uh, – because uh, it's weird for me since we still have maybe a month or half away until the next Inspire show. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I've been – I've been – have now, now that I've started to work for them, I, I've got a weird jonesing for those shows ever since. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so now with like a long delay, it's like, oh, what? What? I can relax now. That's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do with two weekends off. And then I and then I'm looking at like my schedule for like uh, uh like like uh, uh, April May and I'm like oh my god why why is this happening to me <laughs> yeah um no it, that seems to happen and, and, and at least for my and I'm I'm working for two groups uh in in like I've worked for I could call them two other groups sparingly throughout my time uh, uh, um uh Scotty how do you how do you manage the 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 schedule like like do you like keep a pretty heavy schedule there a pretty regular schedule i mean i think it was a good discussion to have with somebody you know actually wrestling well this end is actually going to be a little bit uh a little bit packy. i'm going to be wrestling here in san antonio friday for twa texas wrestling I uh, shouldn't have even said the acronym because I always think it's alliance, but it's association. Mm-hmm. Or it's, I always think it's association, but it's alliance. So I always like trip myself out about that. But TWA, San Antonio. Um, and then immediately after that, I'm going to be driving down to Mexico with Sammy Guevara. And oh, nice. I'm be, yeah, I'm going to be wrestling in Mexico in Matamoros and Reynosa. So, nice. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. So my first international uh, dates. So that's going to be and crazy. And I, I, I should have mentioned this in the interview, actually, because I know you predominantly work in Texas, but I know not too long ago you actually made your first trip out of Texas uh, mm-hmm. to uh, Arizona, I believe. Yep. Actually, it wasn't even my first trip out of Texas. I went to the Slave to the Death Match tour or the Slave to the Death Match tournament in nice. uh, Denver, Colorado. <laughs> A few months before that, but I was in a battle royal. I wasn't in the deathmatch tournament. I'm not really a deathmatch kind of guy. So <laughs> I was gonna say, if you, is there a new side of Scotty San Diego I haven't seen before? I need to. No, no, I, I haven't started, you know, throwing people through barbed wire or anything like that. So. <laughs> uh, that'll but, come, that'll uh, come I, later. That's the natural progression, I'm sure. So, but uh, this was the first one that I was actually, you know like in contact with the promoter and you know like okay i'll come out there and you know so on and so forth so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was really fun it was really fun it was very similar to acw it was like an acw crowd but not in austin so mm. and, and that's um because i I'm under the impression, and and you know, talk with Eamon here because we always, I know we always joke when uh, we were talking about indies back on the Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, where there would be something in like what, what I don't know what we say Dallas or Austin, and we're like, well, why don't you go to SmackDown in Austin? And you're like, my God, it's 
four hours away or something. You know, we have this like like <laughs> skewed is a big state. Yeah, yeah, we have this skewed view <laughs> of and then and then they say, hey, why aren't you going to Philadelphia to do this thing when I'm in Pittsburgh? I'm like it's six hours away. You know, and 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 this complete like a uh, uh, map. You know, misconceptions about our separate areas. Um, is it tougher in the Texas area? Because it feels, it seems that things would be a little bit more spread out. Whereas I, I feel like people, like say here in the Midwest, they have a lot of options. Uh, it, it it feels like you know, one, there's way too many places here in Pittsburgh at this point that you, that guys could work for. They head down to West Virginia, or they go to Philadelphia, and there's you know that in Jersey, and God knows what else wrestling there. Uh, Ohio, Cleveland, Columbus, uh, any small town in between seems to have a fed at this point. Is is what what's the scene like there as far as like you know going to Arizona? That's a pretty good distance for you guys it was a 16 hour trip oh my way. god <laughs> jesus wow yep but uh, and and what are the, what, what, that was probably the long ride that i've ever been on yeah i didn't know if you were gonna say anything else sorry oh no no, no. I, I i was just wondering like those sort of longer trips like i I, I, that's because usually I just for inspire, I just go to Austin, but I, I actually actually go to a not to work a show, but I went to a, a road trip s sort of show to Houston once and and like sort of that mentality of like being on the road and and like you know with other people and and, and driving long distances how how is the how is the actual like trips like in a sense? Um, you know all that i mean it's a different dynamic all the time when i went to colorado i went with uh chewy martinez ruben Steele, uh both really good guys i love ruben actually i've been starting to work out with him at planet fitness uh right down the road so ruben's like very good good buddy of mine Ooh, there just went out uh can you all still hear me yeah you're good you're yep. good okay, cool cool and then Chewy's Chewy. Um, if anybody watching this knows him, you know they know what he's all about. So he's he's crazy, but he's cool. I love him. <laughs> uh, but the trip up to Arizona, I went with Jack Jameson and also with Steve, my partner Steve, my tag partner. Uh, and that was just, I mean, it was a good trip, but it was just different dynamics. So I mean, you know, whereas you know I was going to Colorado with those guys, and you know. Ruben's driving and he's blaring, you know, death metal or something. You know, I'd be going up there with him and Jack James would be playing a bunch of anime themes and stuff like that. So, but, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, they're all good guys. I wouldn't be in a car for that long a period of time with anybody I hated. So, you know, just that wouldn't be worth it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of the stuff going on in 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 our respective uh, respective fields. Uh, I guess we can promote. There is. I did find out. It's like a sort of said a bit of a light week for indie wrestling all across the board. Uh, but there's def I mean, there's always indie shows out there. So if you're in the yeah. area of an independent wrestling show, I encourage you to go to it to uh, to support the guys. Uh, like uh, Scotty mentioned, uh, Texas Wrestling Association in San Antonio this weekend. Uh, if you're in San Antonio, go check that out. Uh, the other promotion that I found. Uh, sort of bigger scale promotion that is holding an event is uh, Premier Wrestling Experience out of the uh, North Carolina area. Um, and I've heard actually a lot about these guys. They're, they're, I heard some rumblings. They get some some big names. I believe they've had uh, AJ Styles recently come in, uh, mixed with a lot of guys, so, sort of predominant guys on the independents. Uh, and and looks like they're having a, a weekend of shows, Friday the 14th in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, Saturday the 15th in Hickory, North Carolina. Um, so if you're in the North Carolina area, I would encourage you to go support them. Uh, I believe you can get more tickets or you can get information and tickets at pwxprowrestling.com. Um, and I believe they also have DVDs of sorts. I don't know. If I want to say they do it through SmartMark, but I may be wrong. Um, but uh, definitely go support them. Uh, and, and like I said, go support indie wrestling everywhere. Um, and I guess the last thing we can talk about uh, is our challenge from last week. Uh, for those that don't know, we do a uh, indie mayhem challenge every week where we pick an independent wrestler, and uh, basically we compose a playlist that you can find on youtubecom slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, where you can view uh, video clips of that wrestler and give us your feedback by either tweeting us at mayhem show or emailing us goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. 
um, and, and sort of get more people's name out there, get some exposure for people. Uh, this one was one I was very excited about. Uh, this week's uh, challenge was none other than the Texas star, the centerfold Matthew Palmer. Uh, Sorg, I know you saw a bit of the playlist. Uh, what, yep. what do you think? Oh, well, one, I made a mistake of, you know, in not knowing the wrestler too well, I dropped into a four way match, so it was kind of hard to follow along while I was kind of working on the side. Yeah, I should. But I did see, so I should start at the top. Uh, but I did see uh, 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 one promo uh, from RCW, uh, which kind of struck me. Um, he's talking about like uh, uh he survived cancer he survived a heart problem which makes me think what are you doing wrestling with all your problems um <laughs> holy crap uh but no really good promo uh there from rcw um but i uh, unfortunately i didn't get into like much of his wrestling stuff um so i mean what are your thoughts of his his, his style there amen uh, i love palmer um uh palmer i'd like you to the promo specifically i think palmer's mic skills are beyond compare i think to a lot of people mm-hmm. um and he's definitely one i think is definitely due to gain some notoriety in a sense on the indies uh, recently he actually got to make his debut in uh, the new england area for beyond wrestling as a part of their nice. tournament for tomorrow and he made it to the semifinals actually uh, in his debut for the company which is big um and i know they'll slowly be releasing stuff on their youtube channel uh, from that tournament so um but yeah palmer's great i i love i love the guy he's a uh, really one to truly look out for uh, in the world of independent wrestling. And, and like I said, he's got a great story. He's got a great look. Um, and he's really good, you know, professional wrestler. And I get, I get asked Scotty, too. I mean, Scotty, you, you shared locker rooms with Palmer, obviously. Uh, uh, do you have any thoughts I, I haven't touched on? Uh, any man that can come out to Phil Collins as an entrance music is a okay in my book. So, <laughs> what does he come out to? He comes out uh, to uh, in the area. So Oh, that's amazing. Well, he comes out to that, but he also comes out to um, that other one. Santa Fold from uh, J. Jill, J. Jill's band? There you go. Is that, that's the one. Is that my pronunciation? I think right? it's I, Giles' I, band. Giles' band. I, I was believe. also born in 93. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the shaky area on that one, too. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah. As he's, he's he's ice, really. That was our challenge for this week. Next week, uh, we are going to be... You okay over there? (laughs) Yeah, sorry. My apologies. Um, This week's challenge uh, that you can, uh, like I said, go to youtube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show to view the playlist uh, is a guy that we had on the Mayhem Show in the past. Uh, I definitely want to get him back for the Indie Mayhem Show. Um, Guy that's originally from Texas uh, but has uh, recently moved to St. Louis to sort of get some more exposure and and, and, uh, get... Uh, more eyes on him is uh, absolute Ricky Starks. Mm-hmm. Um, great guy, like I said, a good mix of uh, personality and also in ring work. Um, uh, so, and some may know uh, former uh, WWE uh, exposed talent in a sense, being uh, put through a catering table by Ryback. So, um, if you've seen that face before, you'll you'll probably I, I would encourage you to sit down and, and enjoy some Ricky Starks yes, matches. Yes. Uh, so, like I said. Um, Go to uh, youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show to view the playlist. Um, but you're not limited to the playlist. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, go buy a DVD featuring Ricky Starks and you know go support him any which way you can. Uh, but uh, once you see some footage, uh, tweet us at mayhem show or email us at good times at wrestling mayhem uh, with your thoughts and uh, we'll read them on the air and 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 discuss and and get uh. Expose people to more indie wrestling. So we're all about exposing things. Yes, on this show. exposing in the good way. Like you might want to rephrase that. It sounds like you're yeah. trying to flash the <laughs> we're, we're not. We're not exposing the business, as as some may say. No. But, well, I'm just saying this is the first time I've used a webcam or anything. So you're talking about exposing stuff, and I mean it's just. Oh well, fun fun fact that that that's actually happened on the show before. Um, yeah, but, there that somebody did show their ass on this show. Yeah, yeah. Who times. was it? Was it somebody I know? Uh, no, somebody no, from it, up here. It's one of the odd Pittsburgh guys. <laughs> well, well, it is. They are yeah. from a team called the STDs, the sexy talented dudes. So, yeah, it nice. tells you 
there. Um, excellent. Um, of course, and you can check everything out. Like we said, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, the iHeartRadio app. Holy crap. Uh, you can join us here at 11 p.m. Eastern or 10 Central Time at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for the live link to join us in the chat room yourselves. Um, and also drop us a line, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or uh, 412-206-WMS0. Thank you, Scotty Santiago at The Green Boys. That's right. Go follow him. Say hi. On Instagram, also on Instagram, scotty 2 selfie. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome amazing get on that that instagram um and of course amen is at amen number two please and you can follow everything he's doing uh with inspire pro wrestling look for oh, inspire pro wrestling on the twitter and what is uh, the inspire pro wrestling.com and go inspire pro to, wrestling. To buy, t- buy tickets to our april 27th event also on instagram or you can find the free shows great stuff we talked about here in the past great stuff with chris hero uh ray Rowe, all kinds of uh ach is on some of those uh chuck and even scotty santiago Taylor and so. scotty santiago exactly. there you go there you go and all kinds of stuff and of course check out uh my stuff over at sorgatronmedia.com you can check out dvds digital downloads all that kind of, kind of stuff uh for uh the wrestling that i'm involved with and everything else going on there including other videos not having to do a podcast and wrestling all that stuff uh yeah you know go Poke around, poke around a little bit. We got all kinds of stuff going on and a bunch of fun stuff we're going to be talking about here in the future coming up. Uh, so with that, thanks, Scotty. Thanks, Eamon. We'll see you guys next week. Go catch some uh, indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick.